Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, so last time we picked up um, the location from Momodi of where the Scions of the Seventh Dawn was after Papa Limo and Ida invited us to join them. So we're going to go check that out today. Um, I went ahead and teleported here to Horizon um, because I was looking and the location we got to go to is way down here next to the ferry. Um, so it's a decent walk. So I figured I'd go ahead and teleport here and at least um, get us part of the way there before the episode started. But we're going to work our way down there and go and figure out a little bit more about what the Science of the Seventh Dawn is. See what kind of mischief they want to get us into. So, hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. I just wish that they had, um, put a teleport an etherite down there. Um, I think next time, though, I'm definitely going to take the time to, um, because if you look, oops, um, there is a fairy there from Limsa Lamensa. I think I'm definitely going to take the time to go to Limsa to the ferry so that way I don't have to run quite so far every time. It's just something I'm gonna have to try to remember. I know that when I played this the first time through I had no idea that you could get there from Limsa Lamensa. I did never never figured that out when it was actually uh, relevant on my first character. <laughs> I figured it out much much later into the game I can be kind of oblivious to um, useful things sometimes. <laughs> Looks like there's a, um, a plus quest right here. I think this one is, um, yeah, it's for glamoring and coloring your uh, gear. I'm going to pick them up and it just gives you some dye. And teaches you how to use the. Um, so I'm gonna pick it up real quick. Uh, you there, yes, you, the decisively unfashionable adventurer. Hey, I mean, I can't help that. Gods be good, never in my life have I seen such an unapologetic un focus on function at extreme cost of form. <laughs> ah, the mere sight of your, f your, you, you fair makes my eyes bleed. As a lover of all things aesthetically pleasing, I cannot in good conscience allow you to continue roaming the realm in that sorry state. I believe your appearance can yet be salvaged through the use of color. I will teach you how to go about dyeing your outfit, but first I must have a drink. The heat has given me a vicious thirst, and I won't be able to talk for any length of time. Be a dear and buy me a bottle of orange juice at the stall by the northern gates, would you? Once I have moistened my throat, we shall see to the business of remedying your appearance. Bossy? And then Glamour, they've changed uh, the way Glamouring works, and it looks like they give you all the stuff that you need here, and a hat. That's interesting. Um, they're also going to teach me that. Oh dear, dear, dear. This will never do. My sense of aesthetics simply won't allow it. How can you go dressed like that? Very easily. My dear, if only you'd spare a thought for style and coordination. I hope your garb holds up during a scuffle because there's little else going for it. That's it. I've made up my mind. From this day forth, I'll take it upon myself to save you from any more fashion disasters. Whoops. Let me see. So much that needs to be addressed. Where to even begin? Be a dear and get me a drink. Oh my gosh. I'm feeling rather parched and this is a matter best discussed over a glass of something cold. Just go to the pissed piste and ask... Full cleaned. I have some. I'll have some blood orange juice and tell her to make sure there's no pulp in it. Now off you go. Oh, this person is bossy. <laughs> Fashionista to the extreme. You don't have any of that orange juice, do you? There's orange juice. Um, and then the other one is making me go and talk to a specific person. So we can at least finish this first one, though. 
Pray tell, have you bought my orange juice? Lest you have forgotten, the merchant who sells it can be found just inside the northern gates. There's your orange juice. Phew, that's a relief. Finally, I can teach you how to bring color into your life. Listen well. Your outfit doesn't look that great either, hun. Red, yellow, and blue. There are handy items called colorants, which allow folk to dye their outfits a veritable rainbow of colors. These colorants are so simple to use, adventurers have no excuse to be fashion unconscious. Lest you worry that dyeing will affect your garment's precious properties, you may be rest assured it will not. The practicality you adventurers love so much will not suffer for the change in appearance, a change for the better. It should also gladden you to know that garments can be dyed repeatedly, so there is no fear of getting locked into one color. The garish pink that seemed like a, such a wonderful idea after a dozen glasses of red can be undone. And that is all you need to know about dyeing gear. Now, what are you waiting for? Get out there and bring some color into your life. And, like I said, we're gonna have to go talk to somebody up farther north before we can do the rest and it looks like there's a few red quests so either yeah they are much higher level so we're gonna have to continue working oh wait I think Falkland is down here maybe it would help if I actually look at where the location is before I just assume that I'm gonna have to run really far to talk to somebody Yep, there he is. Or she! There we are. I was... I have no idea how to say that name. Uh, Swearer sent you, did she? That woman, I've never known anyone so lazy. Would it kill her to come and get it herself? Here you are. You shouldn't let her push you around, you know. Give her an ilm and she'll take a malm. There's a person over there doing this quest, too. So how's that drink coming along? Oh, delicious! Nothing better on a hot day. Some say I have expensive taste, but life's too short to settle for second best. Of course, this extends to my choice of wardrobe too. Now I'm feeling, now that I'm feeling refreshed, let's shall we get started? Do you know, dear, you'd look a lot less drab if you knew how to apply glamours. What's a glamour, you ask? Well, they use glamour prism as a catalyst to pro project the image of one item onto another. It's just an illusion, mind, but very convincing. That means the original object stays essentially the same, it just takes on a new appearance, that's all. Remember, if you fancy a change, you don't have to stick with the same glamour. Just apply another one on top, or use a glamour dispeller to return the object to normal. Why sacrifice style for such humdrum trifles as durability or protection from bodily harm? Limitless possibilities for self-expression are just a couple of glamours away. Go ahead, give it a try, and do make it quick, dear, for my sake. I'm finding your uninspired attire more and more offensive with each passing moment. I don't have to do it for her, do I? Glamour dressers and in-rooms are now available. We may use dressers to transform items into glamours and create ensembles for quick and easy use. Interesting. And she's got another quest. Uh, we gotta be a level 15 crafter, though, to do that one. Alright, now we're gonna go do the main story quest. <laughs> After that little bit of sidetrack there. Okay, we're gonna talk to this person. They're standing in a chair. Look at how cute. <laughs> oh. Deep in the desert of my heart, a lonely flower blooms, yearning for the heavens above to quench my thirst for you. Tra -la 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 -la. She's adorable. I love her. Oh, ah! <laughs> it definitely scared her. I would think you not. I would thank you not to sneak up on me like that. Now, please be advised that this is private property. Unless you have per pertinent business here, I must ask you to... Here at the best behest of Ida and Papalimo. 
My sincerest apologies. May I please have your name? Lian Longtian. Ah, here you are. I'm in the book. Ahem. I bid you welcome to the Waking Sands, headquarters of the Scions on the Seventh Dawn. My name is Tataru, and I look forward to assisting you during your time with us. Oh, she's so cute. The antecedent is within the solar. I shall let her know to expect you. In the solar. I guess it's the name of one of the rooms. Take it, you're Lian. Tataru sent word that you had arrived. Lady Menphilia has e eagerly awaited your coming. This way, if you please. Uh, I suppose we'll take that just for the higher armor. Ooh, so you are the people. adventure of whom I've heard so much. Spoken. Well met, friend. My name is Minphilia, and I lead the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I have awaited your coming. Please. Some people we haven't met yet. Ease. You are among friends here. Hmm. <laughs> No doubt you are ripe to burst with questions, but have patience. All will be revealed in time. First, let me begin by telling you who we are and what we do. We are the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, an order that transcends political boundaries. Our single objective is the preservation of the future of Eorzea. Hmm. Among our gravest concerns, are the godlike beings known as the primals. Their existence is a bane upon Eorzea, nay, the world at large, and we have striven to find a lasting solution to the threat they pose. Our order is home to a number of individuals who, like you, possess a rare and special talent. This talent takes various forms, but one holds particular interest for us. I wonder if they're talking about those visions. Tell me, have you ever experienced a sudden, inexplicable loss of consciousness? Have you ever had the sensation of being pulled away from reality? Felt as though you were hovering in space, a mind without a body? All these things are the manifestations of your talent. Yours is the power to transcend the boundaries of the soul. A power known as... The Echo. The Echo allows you to pass through the walls of a man's soul and hear the resonations of his past. You will be there in his memories and see things as he saw them. You may even interact with that which you see, though you cannot change the outcome of events. Hmm. You can interact with them too. For another blessing, the Echo will enable you to know a man's mind even if you cannot comprehend his words. In short, the Echo is a truly extraordinary power, and this power is strong within you. It is only a shame that we cannot use it whensoever we choose. Hmm. That's right. I, too, possess the Echo. With that established, let us return to the subject of the Primals. So long as they exist, the realm cannot take so much as a single step towards true peace. Measures must be taken, 
Measures which transcend boundaries, be they of faction, race, language, or creed. And to do so, the Scions require the aid of those with our talent. Make no mistake, the Echo will be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. Without it, we cannot hope to save the realm. I know not what it is you desire for yourself, nor what it was that first brought you to Eorzea. But I firmly believe that the power we possess was given to us for a purpose. Why else would the gods entrust man with a gift so extraordinary, if not to have him use it? And True. so I implore you, lend us your power. Very passionate, passionate speech. <laughs> oh, naturally, your aid will not go unrewarded. We are fortunate to have a number of influential allies, and at a word from me, they will glad they will gladly afford you certain privileges that might otherwise be de denied you. The the right to employ retainers, for example, are you familiar with them? They are individuals who may be relied upon to ma manage your assets and belongings on your behalf. That explains why I couldn't get one earlier. The papers you requested, my lady. She's so cute. Thank you, Tataru. The pleasure is mine, my lady. By way of a welcoming gift, I have taken the liberty of adding your name to the retainer's regist registry. As of now, you are entitled to employ the services of a retainer. You will need to consult a retainer vocate regarding the particulars of this arrangement, but believe me when I say that retainers will prove invaluable to you in your ad adventuring endeavors. Let this gesture serve as evidence of our commitment to do all in our power to facilitate your personal obje objectives. In return, we ask that you aid us to the fullest extent of your talents. A mutually beneficial relationship, I am sure you will agree, and one which serves the greater good besides. Well, that was a veritable lecture, was it not? Forgive me, but it is important that all concerned are aware of what is expected of them. Now you know our purpose and what we can offer you. I invite you to consider joining us. When you have come to a decision, you may tell me what, without fear of censure. In good faith, I shall entrust you with our order's password, which our members use to reach one another when afield. It is Wild Rose. Pray keep it safe. Everybody moved, and they're kind of doing their own thing now. We Scions have but one objective, to safeguard the future of Eorzea. Among our gravest concerns are the godlike beings known as Primals. Long have we striven to find a lasting solution to the threat they pose. I know not which it is that you desire for yourself, nor what it is that first brought you to Eorzea, but I firmly believe that the power we, we possess was given to us for a purpose. Didn't she say this in the um, voiced over part? Pray consider this when you give me your answer, Lien. I will go whither the wild rose blooms. Nymphilia is waiting to hear whether or not you will pledge your support to the signs of the seventh dawn. I take it you will help us. Oh, audio again. Wonderful! I knew you wouldn't let us down. <laughs> But come, I would introduce you to your friends in the Order. Tell me, does the name Charlian ring any bells? It used to be one of Eorzea's six city-states, and was situated in the northwest of Aldenard. The Charlians were the keepers of wisdom both old and new. Their mastery over magic and ether was unsurpassed, and even the Garlians knew to fear them. Among their number, there were a noble few who devoted their lives to safeguarding the future of Eorzea. When the realm began its descent into chaos, and their countrymen fled for the motherland, they alone chose to remain here. 
These noble men and women were called the Archons. Archons. Those same brave souls stand before you now. The masked woman is Ida, and beside her is Popolimo. The two are charged with surveying the Twelve's Wood. Hello there! <laughs> Welcome! I had every confidence that you would agree to help us. Me too. <laughs> I love them. Okay, my turn to introduce someone. That there is Thancred. He is our man here in Ulda, Jewel of the Desert. Welcome to the team. If I may, the lovely maiden beside me is named Yastola. Limsa Lominsa has the pleasure of being under her care. Greetings. Last but not least is Uriange, who presides over all affairs within these halls. Pray seek him out whenever you have questions. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. <laughs> Reading the quote. The words of a dear friend. I am glad of our meeting. I like him. At the Battle of Cartoneau, our leader was taken from us. But we did not stray from our purpose. We sought out Minfilia and others with her talent. And together, established the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Along with the Archons, those blessed with the Echo play a pivotal role in our endeavor to forge a brighter tomorrow for the realm. Oh, I should also introduce you to Tataru, our clerk. She ensures Tataru. that everything runs smoothly. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I love time, her. I hope you will come to think of us as family. But without further ado, I would assign you your first task. She sounded very pleased about that. <laughs> Uriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Baldessian. Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have received a request for aid from the Immortal Flames. Thancred, would you do the honors? It would be my pleasure. Some days ago, a crystal caravan registered to Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern was waylaid and divested of its cargo. But there is more. Within a bell of the robbery, several people were reported missing from the shantytown outside the city. At a glance, one would assume the involvement of bandits, kidnappers, and coincidence. Such crimes are hardly uncommon, and the immortal flames deal with their like almost every day. However, this time we have reason to believe that a primal is involved. Uh-oh. Aye, the evidence left behind implicates the Emolja, who are known worshippers of Ifrit. If we then consider the objects that were taken, there is no room left for doubt. The crimes were committed in the name of a primal. Hmm. That you may better understand the nature of our struggle with the primals, I would have you play the leading role in this investigation. You have my thanks. If there is aught you wish to know, I recommend you speak with Thancred. He is well versed in the affairs of Ulda. Ever at your service, fair lady. <laughs> He's a charmer. And we're going to talk to Thancred and learn more about what's going on. Ready to begin, are we? That's the spirit. 
So then, your mission is to investigate a crystal robbery at a spate of abductions. And a spate of abductions. Crimes which we believe to be connected. Assuming we are con correct, it is like that any discoveries we make in relation to one will further our understanding of the other. Now, since the attack on their caravan, our friends at uh, Amagina and Sun's Mineral Concern have doubled security over all of their shipments. In light of this, it is my judgment that the abduction should be our priority. According to our preliminary findings, the majority of the missing were last seen in the vicinity of Camp Drybone, so that would seem a fine place to begin. A fellow by the name of Isambard serves as the camp's de facto leader. Pay him a visit and see that he gives us his full cooperation. Alright, Camp Drybone. I don't think we're anywhere near that. Yeah, we're, we're just going to teleport there. Because luckily we've been to that area already. Okay. Miss Bard is right over here. Hi, I'm Miss Bard. Here to search for the missing folk, I take it. Menphilia sent word that an adventurer fitting your description would be along. She also warned us to be wary of the Amalja. It seems we know who the culprits are at the very least. Now, I bear no official title at this camp, but the people here who have but the people here have come to look at me, f look to me for leadership. Blech. You have my word that I'll do all I can to help see the victims safely returned. And we'll just take them before we get there. Grass Gorget. I think we got those. This Bard of Camp Drybone is seeking help to solve a mystery of missing persons. Let us get right to it then. Menphilia names the Amalja culprits in all this. You would do well to investigate them first. Much harm has been levied on these lands by Amalja hands. The flames burn where they might, but their light cannot stay the darkness in all places at all times. There have been brutal murders of, call of callers at the Church of St. Adama Lendama, innocents wishing no more than to pay their respects to the dead. The poor souls deserve a proper burial. I would see to the deed before mongrels catch their scent, but I know not if the Amalja still linger. Would you secure their remains for me, friend? You will find them on the eastern road. Twelve willing, you may even come to learn some of what the Amalja seek in this area. Hmm, pretty morbid. Let's see. Path out. Yes. This one goes straight down. Mm, pretty. I love it when they've got the sunsets in the game. Ew. I forgot that we got that new attack. Rage of Halone. Or Halone. I'm not sure how you say it. Uh, we're grabbing some corpses. I want to know where I'm putting them. <laughs> the item is a flower. Where'd it go? Oh, it might be a key item. Yeah, it's a flower. <laughs> Let's see what Rage of Filoni says. Delivers an attack with the potency of 100. 
it increases enmity. So I, I want to put that. I need to figure out a good uh, order to put things in on my hotbar. So that makes sense and so that I can not worry about accidentally clicking the wrong thing or something. It is good to see you returned. Were you able to secure the remains of our fallen? With the bodies given back proper, proper to the earth, the souls will find their way across to the other side. You have done a noble deed this day. I thank you. Now then, what of the Amalja? Did you see any? Surely such massive monstrosities as they cannot conceal their presence, much less take their quarry unawares. Ah, so there were Amalja remaining after all. I feared as much. Their part in the lowborn disappearing is all but confirmed, but I sense there is more to this than meets the eye. The occasional Amalja raiding party would not account for people going missing in these kinds of numbers. The total is too great, and the questions too many. It would not surprise me in the least to learn of another hand in this. But whose? Countless travelers pass through Drybone every day, and even if it were one among them, how would we best discover who may be implicit in these vanishings? Oh, we got level 28! Isambard aims to turn this, his investigation to the common folk. What say we turn an eye to the common folk themselves? It may be among them that we find the reasoning reasons for these vanishings. Twelve forbid it be so. There is a merchant by the name of Ungust who was born here in Drybone and grew up in the Golden Bazaar. A rough character, but he knows the people here better than anyone else. I'd wager he's at the end, quaffing quaffing away the day's earnings. Here, I'll write you a note for you to show him, and else he's not like to speak to you. Oh, he probably won't want to speak with me, but that's okay, I got a note. There he is. Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> well, gods be damned. You're that bloody adventurer who threatened me back in Ulda. What in the seven hells do you want with me now? Dear friend, <laughs> missing people, please help. <laughs> Yours, Isambard. Folk around here are as wary as they come. They'll turn tail and run if you so much as pass a wind nearby. Pray played them all for fools and coaxed some hard labor out of them, I did. If anything, they're even more timid than before, what with all the disappearances. You can go talk to them yourself if you don't believe me. I don't like that guy. I know I'm not supposed to, but still. Please, miss, just leave me be. I have nothing to say but this. Thou'll take who or whatever has been feeding us off low folk. Or off us low folk. What do you want from me? I, I don't want anything. I swear. Please don't kill me. These people are terrified, huh? Getting terrorized by their own people and terrorized by the beastmen. It's just as I told you, wasn't it? The whole lot of them are terrified. <laughs> There's been talk of folk getting abducted, but if you ask me, they simply up and move to onto a better place. This place isn't exactly close to Del Sol, if you know what I'm saying. Hmm. I don't think so. Welcome back, Leon. Have you learned aught of import? I see. I suppose I should have expected as much from Ungust. Well, another thought occurred to me in your absence. The common folk are nothing if not fervent in their religious beliefs. Perhaps if they speak freely to their god, even the clergy may know something of use. And some bard would like you to learn what you can from the clergy. If we would know what the common folk speak of their 
of to their gods, we've no better place than the no better place to ask than at the Church of Saint Adama Ladam Landama. It is a small and humble church found to the northwest of here. And so long as you are headed there, might I ask you to deliver this embalmed corpse? A morbid request, I grant you, but it must be borne to burial, and I trust none more than you to see it done. Seek out a man named Marcus. He tends he tends the graves of the lichyard. He will tell you where the body is to be interred. Alright. I'm gonna go this way. Oh um, no, that's not the right way out. I need to go this way. That is the church. Okay. Are they just standing next to a dead body? Hey, Marcus, yes. A body? Of course. There there have been so many bodies of late. I I apologize, miss. If you seek a place of burial, then there is an empty grave atop the ridge. Take the path and lay him to rest there. Mm. I think this is the right way. Yeah. I just placed him... Oh, okay. I have to bury him next. Okay. <laughs> I put some rocks there. May they all, all walk in Thal's realm. What? Missing people? I, I'm afraid I cannot help you. But maybe Sister... O Orson can. She has been kind to me. Everyone, everyone has been so kind. I don't know why, though. I... Pardon me. You will find Sister Orison within the church walls. I hear you have done us the service of burying a fallen soul. Please accept our gratitude and extend it to Isambard when next you see him. Hmm? You seek knowledge of missing drybone inhabitants. It is true I am closer to the people than any other of the order. I confide in them and they in me. When they wish to speak to their keeper, Thal, I am the medium through which they do. Should I learn anything pertinent, I will be sure, sure to share the information with you. <sighs> I only wish Marcus would be more helpful in the matter. I pray he did nothing to offend. He saw terrible things during the calamity his scars run deep indeed he seems to now prefer the company of the dead over the living while tragic i fear such behavior ill befits the church i received word not long ago that one of our recent visitors a man called thancred i believe took offense at his conduct i must have words with marcus and soon okay let's so go back to camp drybone now just about to say, where'd the background music go? Thank you, Leon. A burial is no easy thing, even when the departed is a stranger. Were you able to learn aught of the missing common folk? You've been keeping yourself rather busy of late, haven't you, Leon? A pleasure, my dear Isambard. 
The name is Thancred, and I share a passion with you and our mutual friend here for learning what has become of these missing persons, and why. I too spoke with Ungust, more times than I care to count. There seems to be some truth to his notion of the common folk speaking their secrets only to those in service to the gods. For prostration, prostration, prayer, penance, abject deeds done behind closed doors, away from prying eyes. Who better th to take the pious unawares than she who takes confession, the good sister Orson herself? Orson, she wouldn't, she, she couldn't. Even the most beautiful roses have thorns, my friend, and you would be wise to keep an eye on this rose. Still, the Lich Keeper Marcus, I'd swear to the Twelve I've seen that face elsewhere before. <laughs> and we're going to take the silver piece. Bankrate disappeared. Isambard is concerned about the questions surrounding Sister Orson's integrity. Sister Orson, it cannot be, though she is wont to travel to the Golden Bazaar on her own, and it is not uncommon to see her speaking to the children, but no, it could not be she, could it? Hmm. I grow weary of these suspicions. I know there is one child in particular that she is fond of. Pray seek out the boy, Leanne, and see if you cannot glean something from him about Orson's activities. Okay. Learning people's dead dark secrets. I honestly can't even remember. Oh, it's way up there. Whoopsie. I honestly can't even remember where this part of the story kind of takes you. I know that we got a primal coming up uh, they pretty much already told us that that's what we're looking for is influence of the primals and also looking for the missing people but I don't remember anything about the church lady Orson if she did anything I have no idea the part that she actually ends up playing in this uh, scheme that we're investigating right now. So it's kind of cool to see all this again and relearn what I've forgotten about. I, I really have no clue what's what's coming up. Another chocobo keep up here. I can talk to her real quick. Uh. Uh. There's a boy. He looks like he doesn't know what to do. Stay clear from them to gave me the crotch rod they did. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Did they really put that in here? <laughs> Paired stuff. Uncombed urchin. I want some kids. Please help. Sister Orson went out on her all on her own and hasn't come back. She always reads to me right here about Thal and the Order and the other side. I told her I lost my shiny thing and she went looking for it. But what if the monsters outside hurt her? Please find her. Hmm. Seems fishy. A purple ring around it, so we're gonna have to fight some stuff.
Oh, they're zombies. Church, thank goodness you arrived when you did. It seems my gratitude is yours yet again. You spoke with the child? Yes, well, I was able to find his lost trinket. It is a ring given to him by his mother before she passed. I will, I will see it safely back to him. Hmm. I'm not sure if I want to trust this lady yet or not. Music keeps having really long pauses in between plays. I mean, it's not bad, but it is very quiet right now when I'm running around in the open world areas. All right. Sister Orson was attacked outside of the Golden Bazaar. Gods for fiend. Forfend. I will secure a room at the inn for her should she require any rest. Searching for the mementos of orphans, and risking her own well-being in the doing, no less. Certainly not the dastardly deeds Thankard would have us believe. Those are not what I need, so I'm gonna get the silver theme. This bard seems to have a message for you from Thancred. I am well glad I reserved that in for Sister Orson. It seems she received greater injuries from her attackers than she initially let on. Thankfully, she is expected to make a full recovery. But now, on to the matter at hand. Thancred came looking for you once more. He left word that he would be waiting at the Amalgia encampment to the southeast. I pray the two of you are able to uncover some evidence regarding these disappearances. Alright. Um, I'm going to take this pathway. I'm going to turn to the left here. I think I see him standing up there. Yeah, there he is. Hello, Thancred. Ah, oh, there you are, Leon. So good of you to come. Indeed, I've heard all about good sister Orson. Isambard said her wounds were serious. It would seem my suspicions about the poor Rose were misplaced. But, false though they were, perhaps my suspicions were not entirely without merit. Well, file... Whilst following Sister Orson near the Golden Bazaar, a band of Amalja caught my eye. I tracked them as far as this encampment, but, well, let us let us say that I would much recur prefer to keep my distance and remain here. This, of course, brings me to why I requested for you, dear Leon. Would you be so, ki so kind as to go take a look inside? Sure. Although I know you just don't want to go in there yourself. Hmm. 
I'm right at 10 levels higher than these guys, so they m might not even like aggro to me. Queer leaflet. Okay, got that. Was that it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I guess you gotta be 11 higher before they stop reacting to you. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Well, did anything tickle your fancy? This leaflet. See the wealth of Nald to the hands of your children. It looks to be some sort of assembly to provide the poor with work. The lettering, though, atrocious, is it not? And these bits about Nanthal seem somewhat less than studied. I find it hard to believe one among the order penned this. Pray take this to the inn at Camp Drybone. Let us see what Sister Orson makes of it. Hmm. I wonder if he said that the the writing was really atrocious. So maybe was it written by one of the Amalgia? Or maybe somebody who's just not gone to school. Uh, let's see. she is. My savior comes again. To what do I owe the honor this day? What is this? Blasphemous. These are not our teaching us at all. This was not made by any true brother or sister of the order. Of that, I can assure you. Come to think of it, weeks ago, the church was plagued by missing garments. Could someone be posing as a priest of the order to deceive the people? Ah... Okay, that makes more sense than this lady, because she seemed pretty genuine. The plot thickens, Lian. <laughs> Our culprit pretends to be the priest, be a priest to lend credence to his deception. There is no doubt of an irony in there somewhere. But I suspect we have a worthy adversary on our hands. I shall consider how best to handle this. For now, tell Isambard that we have what we have learned here. Hopefully it, it won't end up too bad and that the not too many more people are abducted because that would suck. Especially with how close we appear to be. Posing as a priest? To think. These troubling notions aside, it is gratifying to finally be able to move this investigation forward. Thank you once again, Lian. I shall keep my ears and eyes open, now more than ever. So that's the same thing we've got. Just take a bronze piece. Yes, and Bard wants to help you identify and apprehend the false priest. I'm afraid I have not seen any unusual activity, nor have any at this camp given me cause to doubt them, but unless we can identify the culprit, and soon, more innocents will fall victim. Hello, Thancred. Do not despair just yet, my friend. An idea occurs to me. Our sus suspect has been posing as a priest, using leaflets bearing false promises to lure the poor. Let Leanne and me serve like we... Mm, let Leanne and me serve like with... like with... like by posing... Let Leanne and me serve like with like by posing as impoverished souls in need of, a, of succor. Ah, I dare to hope that this would yield us the answers we seek. It would be it will be a dangerous undertaking, but you two are more than capable of looking after yourselves. I'm next to useless in battle, but I can supply the garments for the disguise. These old tunics and slops should serve your needs, so long as you don't mind the smell and the stains. 
These will serve very well. You have my thanks. Listen, Lien. So as to lay the foundation for our little ploy, we must make it widely known that mere, more vagrants have arrived at camp and are desperate for coin. To this end, I want you to don the old garments Isambard has lent us and beg for work around the camp. Before long, the false priest should catch wind and approach us. Ooh. Alright, let's put these clothes on. I think it was just the shirt and pants. Yeah, they didn't give me any. Even though I'm still obviously wearing my nice helmet and <laughs> and uh, shield and legs and stuff. Oh well. I preach the teachings of Izima, the warden. Hast thou come to partake of the honey of her wisdom? Azima is keeper of the sun and goddess of inquiry. All is laid bare beneath the light of her divine countenance. O open thy heart to this light, needy child, and thou shalt sh want for naught till the end of the days. This guy's name is Neural. Hmm? And you are? Hmm, another refugee by the looks of you. The immortal flames have neither work nor coin for your like. Be gone, and see that see to it that you don't make a nuisance of yourself. Rude. Uh, and I was about to get to the good part. Looking for work, you say? Sorry, but we don't have any openings. Now, get out of here so I can finish my story. Ermagard. Greetings, good madam. Is there aught I must assist you with? Oh, I don't believe there is. I'm afraid our wares are very expensive. Mayhap you should rejoin your fellows out at the pond north of Sandgate? Stingy. Oh, hold on. Where's this other person? Are they in here? Um. Hmm. Must be in here, and I just didn't see them. We're not. Are they up? Oh, yeah, they are. Um, okay, we'll go up this ramp here. What is it? God, it's not again. Look, being poor doesn't give you the right to pester whomsoever you like. Why don't you keep with your own kind out by the muddy pond of yours at Drybone? Rude. You have quite a knack for being a nuisance, Leon. The camp is abuzz with talk of newly arrived vagrants. And though we were unable to attract our wayward transgressor, we were able to learn that the poor have a commune by the pond north of Sandgate, to the east of here. The eyes of the authorities do not reach that place, rather ideal for spiriting away hapless souls. Let us go there and wait for the kindly priest to come and offer us aid and comfort. Needless to say, you'll need to remain in disguise. Why aren't you wearing it? Mm.
There's Thancred. Ah, he's finally wearing the outfit. <laughs> A fine morning for catching false priests, wouldn't you say? Ooh, cussy. You look absolutely smashing, Leon. Positively dressed for deception. All that's left, then, is to wait for a quarry to appear. Oh, you poor unfortunate souls. That just made me think of the song. There is no way, f this is no way for men to live. No way at all. How are you, and what do you want? Be at ease, child, for I mean to... For I mean you no harm. I am a priest of the Order of Naldthal, and I come to offer you succor. Oh, it is. It's the guy with the puff hair. I can see his face. This leaflet bears the teachings of Nald. Trust them, and they will surely set you free from the shackles of penu penury. What is that? Hmm, a tempting offer, but I'm afraid I must decline. On account of that atrocious performance, you would have made a god's awful mummer, Ungust. What? How did you know? You bastards tricked me! Please don't hurt me, I was only doing it to protect my people. Is that so? Do continue. Very well. I'm a man of the Golden Bazaar, raised there, if not born. Some moons ago, the Amalja raids began. They would appear sudden as a sandstorm and plunder the and pillage at will. Our defenders couldn't stand against them, few as they were. Everyone lived in fear. I wanted to save my people, but being a merchant was all I knew, and so I did the only thing a merchant could. I approached the Amalja in hopes of brokering a deal. In return for sparing the Golden Bazaar, they made demands, outrageous ones. Demands? Of what kind, pray tell? First of all, they wanted the schedule for crystal shipments from the Nanawa mines. For this, I bribed one of the workers to leak me the information. Next, they wanted me to bring them people, so I posed as a priest to lure in the vulnerable and give them over to the Amalja. I, I didn't have a choice. Protecting one's home is a noble thing, but at the cost of innocence? You could have sought out the aid of the immortal flames, yet you did not. I suspect you are not telling me the full story. What made you sell out your own people? Speak. The mumble was good. What did you say? The coin was good, I said. I could sell mole meat for a score of lifetimes and not see even a fraction of what the Amalja pay me. You sacrificed innocence so that you could line your own pockets? Words fail to express the contempt I feel for you. Spare me your contempt. If you want to blame someone for the mess of the, wor the world's in, then blame yourselves or the gods. Ugh, not you again. Were you the one leaking the Immortal Flames patrol routes to the enemy as well? Spit it out. No, I know nothing about that, I swear. At this stage, I'm rather disinclined to believe all that leaves your mouth, but no matter, there'll be time enough to learn the truth. Oh, You brought that upon yourself, dude. I have no pity. The end. Be a dear and take word of these developments to Minfilia, would you? I shall prize everything I can out of this filth. The abduct abductees are still somewhere out there. Our foremost priority is to rescue them. I'm going to teleport to Limsa and then use the ferry to get there because I don't really want to have to walk there again.
Gotta go to the fisherman's guild. Um, where's the one that goes to... The fairy dog's over by the Arcanist Guild. That's the one. I got them mixed up. Vesper Bay. That's the name of the town that the Waving Sands are in. Cool. That's a big ship. Tatars tamping in your chair. All right, let's tell them in Philia what's going on. Welcome back, Leon. I am pleased that you and Thancred have been getting along. I see. You have done well to uncover the truth. My thanks for the report. As Thancred said, we must ascertain where the abducted were taken, and none but the Amalja know the answer. Suffice to say it will not... Suffice... Suffice it to say it, they will not willingly part with this information. I fear blood will be spilled before all is said and done. Okay, so we get new chess piece. There we go. Okay. It doesn't look too bad. It's not great, but it doesn't look too bad. All right. Well, we're going to end it here for today. Um, I don't want to get into the next uh, quest. I'm worried it's going to be a really long cutscene again. So we're going to go ahead and just stop there. Um, we got a lot done on this one. And definitely getting a little bit more into the story. I hope we get to um, the find where the Amalja are in the next one and learn more about what they're trying to do um, with the uh, abductees and maybe we'll get to see Ifrit. So that'll be really cool. But anyway, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.